The next group of controls are for optimising or speeding up the loading of images in the viewer. The proxy button is a toggle between the full size and the proxy format as set in the project settings. So to see the project settings, the quick way would be to go over the NodeCraft, press S, and here we can see the project settings. I've got it as the default is, scale, half. So clicking that will now set my format to half res. While in proxy mode, if I render out, I will render out at this resolution. Unlike the down res drop down, which only scales the input before displaying in the viewer. Here we're at half res, here a quarter. This will render out at the full size format or at proxy size if the proxy is active, as you can mix the two. Next we have the region of interest. So now this will just update inside that region there. We can move that around like that. Afterwards we have the update button, so clicking this will force a refresh. And then beyond that we have the pause, which will pause a buffer in the viewer. And lastly we have the color workflow and lookup table controls. Viewer input process, this is new to uh, 5.2. Then we have input process, and then we have enable monitor output for external monitors. And clip test, this will zebra stripe pixels out of the 0.0 to 1.0 range. Now we have the 2D image information. So to fully see this, let's maximize the viewer with a spacebar. So first off, we have the format. Then we have the B-Box and the bottom left corner of that B-Box there and then the top right of the B-Box which marries to there. Then the channels or the, or the layers are available in this image and then the X and Y coordinate of the mouse and also the color information where the, under the cursor. Then here we have our secondary color option. This is the current frame. Lock viewer to the project settings frame range shuttle controls, the frame rate the viewer is displaying, end of playback behavior, in and out points, so if we, this is the toggle for in and out points to be activated. This sets the timeline range, it's either taken from the project settings or the read, timeline, playhead. Now let's uh, unmaximize the viewer with the spacebar box overlays so here we can see the this is the bounding box or the B box as it's referred to we need to keep an eye on this because as this area grows everything in this area is what nuke will process so if we have a simple defocus here we can see that this area grows this leads us on to one of the reasons that nuke feels so quick so if we look at the viewer here and now we up this defocus we can see that the scan line just went in this area here. So now if I either zoom out or pan to the right, we can see it now works this out. And now if I pan up, it works that out. So Nuke's clever enough to only compute the lines it needs to show you. We can also force where we want the scan lines to start drawing from. So if we want them to start up here or down here, we just click. You can see that the scan line will then start drawing from where I click. Right, let's get rid of this now. Um, also we have the viewer settings, so these can either be accessed through the right click menu here or with the hotkey S. But S while the mouse is over the viewer because Nuke has focus, S over the DAG will give you something different to S over the viewer. We can also float the viewer here. So if we do that like that and then make our node graph expensive or big. So now if we had this viewer, we'd probably want to hide it at one point, and we can do that with the accent key. So you can see that just toggles viewer on and off. Also choose to reshape the viewer when it's floated. So if we were to zoom like that and then go reshape, it's now going to fit to that shape there. We could go reshape max, or we could even toggle to full screen, which is too big for you to see. Now let's dock the viewer. So to do that, we need to pull that back down there. And then this is the bit you can't drag into there. What you have to do is drag from the tab, then you have it. Now we move on to the on-screen controls in Nuke. If we double click this Bezier, we can see that we have these on-screen controls here. If we double click another one, we have more, more on-screen controls and they will continue to build up. So everything that's open in this bin here, like this, 
will then show in the viewer with its on screen. So it's up to you to manage what on screen controls you want to see and don't. A nice feature with the on screen controls is that if we have a point selected, we can uh, move the point to the right or to the left, up or down or on the diagonals with our extended keyboard. So 8 would be directly up, 2 would be directly down, 4 would be left, 6 would be right, and 9 would be that diagonal there, 7 the diagonal there, 3 there, 1 there. On top of that, if we hold down the shift key, we have greater movement. If we hold down the command or the control key, our movement's finer. This is true with all on-screen controls. So if we have a transform, what we need to do is select that center point and then we can use our on-screen then we can use our extended keyboard to drive that transform. There those. We can turn overlays off with the hot key O, which will turn all overlays off here. Overlay off. But if we have a tracker, the overlays are a three-way state. So we have overlay on, no animation path, overlays off, or overlays on with the animation path. 